So delighted to be here with all of you today. And the first chapter of the Gita has 46 texts. And we ended with the 46 texts in our yesterday. And the 46 texts basically began, uh, ended with Arjuna putting aside his bow. So he has made his point and to some extent he has made his decision. So he's, in one sense, backed up his words with his actions that I, I won't fight. That's what essentially he's saying. Now chapter 2 is one of the longest chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. The Gita itself has totally 18 chapters and 700 texts. So this has 72 texts. The only chapter that is longer is the 18th chapter, which has 78 texts. And in many ways, if you consider in the Bhagavad Gita, the chapter 2 and chapter 18 are like summary chapters. Suppose a good speaker might, suppose there's a well-organized speaker, an organized speaker will initially state what is the topic they are speaking about. Then they will speak the topic, and at the end, they'll say, this is the topic we spoke about today. So that's how, to some extent, it is. So the second and the 18 chapters, because they are summaries, they are tend to be quite long also, because they overview many of the complex and multilayered themes that are discussed in the Gita. So let's begin with the... We'll try to... We'll, uh, begin with the first verse and we'll see how far we can go. In general, we try to go over two verses every day, sometimes more, sometimes less. So let's begin with the first text. Sanjay Uvacha Tantatha Kripaya Vishnam Ashrupurna Kulekshanam Vishidantamidam Vakyam Uvacha Madhusudanaha If we see, this is the first time Krishna is going to speak something which is at least one full words. Krishna's first words in the Bhagavad Gita were 1, 1.25, which we just simply indicate you. Look at, look, there are Bhishma and Ar Drona. You wanted to see them? Now, the first words in the conversational words are in the next two verses. And after that, from 2.11 onward, it will be more of his philosophical or philosophical, metaphysical words that will start. So, in that sense, the Bhagavad Gita, with the words of Krishna, actually begins from here. But And there's a significant uh, teaching movement which comes up, why Krishna does not speak before, before 2.11. We'll come to that. But the point I was making, this is the first time that Krishna is going to speak. And it's describing what was Arjuna's condition. So there are tears and he's depressed. So his mind is depressed and he is overall lamenting of a terrible situation that he's in. Now these tears are significant in many ways because it in indicates intense agony. Warriors generally don't show their emotions. They're trained to hide their emotions. And when it is said tears, when earlier it was spoken, he says, my limbs are trembling and my hair are standing on end. That is one thing. But now it's said that tears are, his eyes are overflowing with tears. That means the pain is so much, the agony is so much that he's not able to conceal it. So it's a, it's a very severe Severe case of emotional affliction for Arjuna. And that's what is indicated by this first verse. So, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Putastva Kashmalamidam Vishame Samupasthitam Anarijushtam Aswargyam Akirti Karam Arjuna. Uh, 
at least in the first few verses over here, there are a lot of rhetorical statements being made. This is 2.2. Where, from where does this emotion come from? That means it just shouldn't be there. Yeah? So when somebody asks, have you lost your mind? Or what were you thinking? Now, when they ask a question like that, that that's basically an indic statement is saying that you are not thinking at all. Or what had come over? It means this is not you. So where have these impurities? Kutastva Kashmalamidam. Where have these impurities come upon you? Basically, he is saying that what impurity is he referring to? It's interesting the reasoning that Krishna is giving over here. He is not stating over here what is the impurity? This impurity. It seems as if it's almost self-evident. Uh, but he will elaborate what that impurity is in the next verse. And he says, impurity, we could say, it's weakness. He will mention that weakness. But he says, impurity in a key moment. It's like a when, as they say, tough people get going when tough times come up. So this is a tough time. This is a big moment. Like a sports player prepares for the World Cups, World Cup matches, and say it's a World Cup final. This is the biggest time, and this is the time when you have to be strong. You cannot be weak. And he's talking about impurity in terms of that this will lead. It is unbecoming to you. You are a great person. You are a hero in a your warrior. So Arjuna Krishna is speaking in terms of present. It is unbecoming for your character. And then when he talks about the future, he's saying the future can be in this world and beyond this world. So in the next world. So, so in the, this world, the kind of action that you are doing will bring infamy. You will be, in today's world, you will be dissed and you will be mocked and you will be laughed at and you will be scorned. So infamy. And also beyond this world, it it will not lead you to heaven. It will not lead you to an elevated destination. So in this way, Krishna is strongly telling Arjun, this is not the way you should be behaving. This is, uh, this is terrible if you behave like this. That's the implication. Mm -hmm. I think mockery is a much better word in today's terms, infamy. Yeah. I, yes. Yeah. If we have people, people are multi-level. Now there is their motivation. And then what we see is their action. Now their underlying might be emotion. Now emotion and motivation are not exactly the same thing. But generally what happens is we look at people outside in. We look at their action that we can very easily see. Mm -hmm. This is very visible, we can say, action, what they are doing. Their emotion is somewhat visible. Some people are uh, poker face, they don't show any emotion at all. But most people, you see at least some emotion in their face. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the motivation, it is hardly visible. It's not visible at all. It's only what we can infer. So in one sense, we are moving from observation towards inference. Now, you know, what Krishna is doing is that if a warrior is about to fight a war and the warrior decides not to fight, what could be the reason for it? So Krishna is going towards, so from an action to motivation. But there could be many different inferences that different people could arrive, arrive at. Because inferences, after all, are, are matters of, to some extent, guesswork. It may be a reasonable or unreasonable guess, but still guess. So now there could be many different motivations. So in one sense, Krishna, you see, Krishna is going towards the most probable motivation that Arjuna might have. That is, what he'll say, he's having a moment of weakness. And therefore he's saying, don't be weak like this. And Krishna will make this clearer in the next verse. 
But the idea is that Krishna is in one sense playing the role of the world over here. And Krishna will give Arjuna uh, by this, by, by playing the role of the world, Krishna will give Arjuna an opportunity to emphatically take the discussion to a deeper level. When he, when he emphatically rebuts, this is not my consideration. In that way, Krishna helps uh, take the entire discussion to a deeper level. So what is the mm -hmm. obvious inference of somebody's action? No, that's not the obvious inference. That, that's not the actual inference. So what would be expected if it is not present? Krishna is uh, saying that this is how the world will see it. And he makes it much, much more clear in the next verse. So, Klaibhyam Masmagama Partha Naitatva Yupapadyate Shudram Rudeda Urbalyam Yatvo Tishta Parantapa. So, technically, there are two distinct words over here. Partha and Prutha. So here it is the son of Prutha, that is Partha. So, so Arjuna's name is Partha, but here is being referred to as son of Prutha. So anyway, so he is saying over here, do not give, do not give in to this importance. So what is the now importance is a very strong word to use, especially for warriors who are generally considered the embodiments of virility. Hmm? The, what he means is, what, what is the importance over here? Importance is basically cowardice. Uh, so he said, it does not behoove you. Uh, and why does it not behoove you? Therefore, he says that don't give in to this weakness. Don't give in to this small-mindedness. Arise and fight. So, that's his focus over here when he's speaking. He is not at all getting uh, into, at this stage, a deeper level of discussion. It's like a soldier who has to fight a war and suddenly gets a set up and I can't fight this. It's so brutal. This is so terrible. I don't want to do this. This is no, this is what your job requires. This is what you signed for. He did that. If in general, it is an unfortunate reality that sometimes violence is the only way to stop violence. Hmm? It is not the final way and it uh, should not be the first way. But suppose you know, there are terrorists going around shooting innocent people. And we don't want violence. But if the police say, oh, you know, oh, these terrorists, these, these people who are rioting, they are just, just misinformed people. Okay, whatever be the, whatever be, they may be misinformed, whatever it is. But they are doing violence and it has to be stopped. So it's like... A surgeon saying that I can't stand the sight of blood. Oh, I'll have to cut this tender bo tender child. Sometimes there are surgeries which have to be done on small babies. Oh, and the doesn't I can't I can't cut this baby. Well, if that's what is required, that's what you signed for. So if somebody has that job, that's what they're prepared for their career throughout their career. That's what they are. Uh, trained to do, that's what they're expected to do. And you don't do that at that time. So in one sense, it's like when he said, this does not be who you. This, this does not become you. This does not be who you. So it's, this is not uh, worthy of you, he's saying. So this is a multiple levels. You know, that's his profession. That's what he's signed for. That's what his training. And then on top of that, that's what his expectation. So all three are related, but still they're distinct. Now, somebody may somehow get the get into an army. That's their profession, but they never had training. Maybe it's a national emergency, and that's why people have been conscripted into the army. But then, okay, that's a different situation. But here, that's his profession. That's what he's trained on for life. 
and it's what people's expectation is people are counting on him for that he's a key warrior and you can't let all these people down at this time it's like suppose somebody sees uh, no okay there are there's a riot going on and the riot has some members of my family then what should i do at that time do i hit them with batons do i shoot at them with some stun guns do i actually shoot them or because they are my relatives they i shouldn't do that so krishna is saying that it's your job you have to do it and you're not doing it is or it will be seen as weakness it will be seen as small mindedness it will be seen as cowardice so basically he says this is before you that means basically he says don't be cowardly that's the essential point and you'll see when this particular statement is made arjuna responds with indignance that's not it at all but krishna takes this whole tack so that that particular notion is categorically rejected so sometimes uh, as long as we have one particular conception of what is going on we just don't see anything else going on so for example if a doctor is talking with a patient and the doctor comes to know that the patient is very poor the patient can't pay uh, that's one that's one aspect of the discussion the doctor says i can't do the surgery now you may say that don't you have any humanity just because you can't be paid so you won't do the surgery but then the doctor says no that's that's one information i got but another information i got is that this person has got extremely high blood pressure this person has got heart issues unless those issues are stabilized we can't do the surgery right now so when a doctor says no to surgery there could be multiple reasons hmm? so if one reason is no payment and once you get it out of the way then we can discuss okay the medical merits of the case is it uh, so if it's if you say there's too much risk over here or it's it's not safe at this point so we can get to that deeper level when the obvious level has been uh, take has been taken out of the discussion that has been clarified so that's what's going to happen over here so you're going <laughs> from a super from a more external reason to a deeper reason said that he is helping arjuna see how the world will see his actions mm. and then he will go deeper into it so mm. in one sense if you see arjuna makes many arguments in the first chapter and krishna will systematically address those arguments one by one but sometimes it says that you know that your actions are so loud that i can't hear your words hmm uh, so that arjuna may have advanced many arguments but his actions seem to speak that oh he is just being a coward so krishna has to categorically get out of the way that's what krishna has done over here so we summarized today basically we discussed about how the first verse talks about arjuna's emotional affliction intense affliction that is in tears and that was the continuation from the previous chapter and second point was that krishna is discussing with arjuna at a at a probable inferential level most probable inferential level that you are not fighting that because of cowardice so generally most people when they see the action and from there they can also see the emotion to some extent but from the action emotion they go, jump towards the motivation and in this case the most obvious motivation that most people think about is that he's scared he's being cowardly he's got an attack of nerves so if he is if that's the case then krishna is telling him that this is unbecoming for you so this cowardice is unbecoming and it's unbecoming because of multiple factors it's because that's your job that's your profession that's your training that's what is the expectation and especially the expectation at this big moment you can't lose it at this time right now so in this way this particular verse takes it comprises the first word that arjuna has spoken in terms of a full verse thank you very much